Hey, hey, everybody, it's Kelly Nielsen here, the grief guru. And on this channel, we discuss all things related to grief. What does it look like? What does it feel like? But most importantly, we share tips, tools, and resources on how to move through grief and get back to living a life that you love. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to move forward on purpose, in purpose, and the power of having a morning routine. So let's jump into it. You know, one of the biggest things that surprises me and the biggest mistake that I see so many of my clients making when they first come to me is that they don't have a plan. In fact, when I talk with people all around the country and I ask, what is your plan for grief recovery? The answer is almost always nothing. Like I don't have a plan. Maybe it involves going to a counselor for a certain period of time or trying a support group here and there, but people don't have a mapped out plan for their recovery. And that just boggles my mind because in every other area of life, if you come up against a hard situation, you would create a plan for how to get through it. Most of us have plans in place for our health and how to eat healthy and an exercise plan. A lot of us have plans in place for our finances. We seem to do planning in so many other areas of our life, but when it comes to grief and loss, most people just sort of let it happen to them and wait for it to get better. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not a good strategy. If your strategy is to just wait for it to get better, you're going to be waiting a long time. What is powerful and effective though, is taking consistent intentional actions. You will find that you can move through grief so speedily if you take intentional, consistent actions and not just any actions, but actions that have been proven to help with grief and loss. And that is absolutely what I help my clients do all day, every day. But on this video, I wanted to share one powerful tool with you, and that is having a morning routine. And one of the things that's most upsetting about grief is that it comes in and interrupts your day. It interrupts your life. It, it's on its own time schedule. A lot of times it shows up illogically and uninvited, right? And we can, it's easy to feel like we're just a victim to grief and that grief is having its way with us. But that doesn't have to be the case. And one of the quickest ways to reestablish who is actually in control is by having a morning routine. I'm curious how many of you have a morning routine right now? I mean, we all have some kind of morning routine because we all wake up every morning, right? So (laughs) if nothing else, your morning routine consists of waking up. You probably do some sort of bathroom morning routine and brush your teeth and wash your face and take a shower and do those things. But what else does your morning routine consist of? And is there room for grief recovery in your morning routine? I would like to say that there is room. And if you'll add an element of your recovery plan to your morning routine, you will see amazing results. So you may involve several things. I'm just going to give you several options, but this is really for you to design a morning routine that fits for you, that fits for your preferences and your time frame, how much time you have. I have an incredibly elaborate morning routine. I am not one of those hop out of bed and jump into the day kind of people. I need to kind of ease my way into it. So my morning routine involves Uh, time in God's word, time in prayer, journaling. I'm usually reading about three to four other books besides God's word. And then I have some statements and declarations, things that I'm intentionally using to shape my life. And I usually listen to those while I'm going on a morning walk. And so my whole routine usually takes about an hour and a half every morning. And I've just designed my life around that because I know that that works for me. I can tell you, I see a tremendous difference in the days when, you know, if I have a really early meeting and I don't get to do my full morning routine, it's like a completely different me that shows up the rest of the day. So it is the, one of the biggest tools that has impacted my life. And actually I was doing a morning routine before I experienced these losses, but it definitely has become much more essential, um, in walking through loss and grief. So here are some ideas that you can incorporate into your morning routine. You can, as just I said, uh, you can spend time reading books that are inspirational, educational. You can be intentionally consuming content that is good for your mind, that tells your mind, these are the things we're going to be focusing on today. Giving yourself good information, encouraging, inspiring, uplifting information is going to help combat those waves of grief. You can spend some time journaling. You know, there's so much emotional weight that is contained in thoughts and emotions 
emotions that are just internal, but there's a tremendous amount of relief that comes from releasing them. So whether that's writing it in a journal, and I actually would encourage you to take it a step further. And once you write it in a journal, read it out loud, it, you'll find that it takes a lot of the heaviness and emotional weight. So even if you wake up just bogged down by grief and feeling so heavy, writing it out and saying it out loud is going to help to lessen the emotional weight of those emotions that you're dealing with. So journaling is another great one. Certainly I'll always advocate for spending time in God's word. That is an excellent use of time and can, you know, help you with grief. Definitely. But the one thing that I have uh, all of my clients do when I work with them one-on-one -on -one and our other grief coaches do as well is to come up with your own framework, your own statements that you're meditating on, that you're intentionally consistently thinking about because grief is going to come in and it's going to bombard you with thoughts, right? And those thoughts are individual, but it might be thoughts of like, they're gone and life will never be the same, or this will never get better, or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever those thoughts are for you. And they can be, like I said, so invasive, they can be so consuming, they can be so detrimental. And if they're not checked, if they're not corrected, if they're not redirected, though, you people can stay stuck in those thought loops for years and years. And it's, it's devastating. It's awful to watch, but if you will begin to train your mind on the things that you're choosing to meditate on, if you every morning say the same four sentences, let's just start with four sentences. If you spend some time reflecting about four positive statements, four statements that are true about your grief and loss, uh, but are directly conflicting or directly contracting the negative things you're thinking about, you're telling your brain what you want it to think about. This is the concept of neuroplasticity. The fact that our brains are always changing and our brains in fact are adapting to what we think about most often. So even if right now today, what you're thinking about most often is the loss and the fact that your loved one is gone, you can condition and train your brain to start thinking about other things. You can even still think about that the person is gone, but that they're still with you in spirit. That's a super cliche, super simple one, but that is one of the things that you can focus on. While they're not physically here, they are still here with you in your heart and in your mind and in the stories and memories that you have and in the conversations that you have with them, maybe in the work that you're doing or the way that you're helping their legacy to live on. There's a million of examples. And again, this needs to be really personal for you, but I encourage you to take the time to come up with some few statements, even if it's just one sentence. And here's a great place to start. Start with the fact that you are getting better. You are recovering. If you tell your brain every morning, day by day, I'm recovering from this loss. Day by day, I'm reclaiming my peace. Day by day, my body, heart, and mind is healing from this tremendous hurt. Just saying that is so powerful. And the more you say it, the more you're going to be able to believe it. And your body is going to line up with that thought and magical things are going to happen. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's what I've experienced in my own life. And I have, this is the most powerful tool when I'm working with clients, this is the thing that helps to change their energy, their ability to believe that they can move through it and get back to a healed and healthy and whole place. And so if I could give you one gift in this video, it would be for you to come up with some sentences like that for yourself and start repeating them every day. You can go a step further and record yourself saying them on your phone, and then you can listen to them multiple times a day. The more times that you are sending that message to your brain, your brain is learning that automatically. And then the beautiful thing is after about 63 days, it actually becomes automatic. It becomes second nature. And so what you'll find and what I've found with so many of my clients is when grief and overwhelming emotions come in, your brain is going to go, nope, and it's going to just automatically revert to those sentences that you've been meditating on. So I pray for each of you this year, as we move into a new year, um, while we're releasing this video here in the end of 2021, that you can actually design your 2022 and take steps every day, every morning, you can take control of your day. You can do things to feed your mind, healthy thoughts, inspiring, encouraging thoughts. And over time, that is going to be the dominating factor and the grief and the sadness and the pain is going to become less and less and less.
I hope this video blesses you. I hope these are nuggets and tools that you can grab hold of and implement in your life. Certainly, if you want more tools and tips like this, subscribe to our channel or check out some of the other videos. But until next time, guys, we'll see you.